I'm Ashton Addison from Block West Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Reggie Jareth, CEO and founder of Gather Network. Reggie, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time. Thanks, Ashton. It's a pleasure to be here and thank you for having me on. You're very welcome. Let's dive straight into it. Blockchain solutions disrupting many, many industries. Uh, Gather Network doing the same uh, with advertising, cloud, so many more uh, faucets that you're diving into. Let's start off our conversation by just giving an overview from yourself on those solutions that Gather Network is building and how it's going to affect the industry. And then we'll dive into the details. For sure. So Gather was founded with a basic, try to solve a basic pain point, which was, you know, uh, finding another way for content providers for websites to make money, right? Everyone from most content providers use advertising and game developers, which is not the best way given the current issues that exist with it. So about in 2018 or so, uh, founded Gather with the simple idea of providing, you know, an alternative form of monetization and how it works back then was very simple. You'd visit a site, you provide your consent and a very small portion of your uh, spare computing power is being used to secure the blockchain, right? Um, I actually discovered something called CoinHive back then. And for those not familiar, it was being used by Pirate Bay to monetize their, their site. That idea in itself, trade, trade processing power for revenue is genius. I was like, this is amazing. It can scale. But the way Pirate Bay implemented it, it, it wasn't going to be okay. Mm -hmm. I'd worked with Publicist Group for a while, which was a major advertising company. Uh, I think right now they're the biggest. And so I knew that, you know, major publishers, major website providers, content providers, they're not going to be okay with, you know, without the bells and whistles. So that's when we brought the team together, add, added all the required features, and we built, you know, version one back in 2018. Now it's very, very different. Um, we have three products and services. So we have Gather Online, the alternative form of monetization for publishers and uh, developers or uh, app developers, etc. We have Gather Cloud, we have Gather Enterprise. Gather uh, online is, you know, again, you visit a website, you provide your consent, and then a very small portion of uh, your computing power is being used to secure the blockchain and subsequent coins attached to the blockchain as well, our blockchain. Um, the amount of processing power that's used is negligible. You won't notice it. It uses less uh, than what than viewing a video ad, right? So it's completely like there's no, no you can't notice anything. Um, Gather Cloud is what we do with a lot of the spare capacity is we resell it on to enterprises and developers as well as a cheaper cost of cloud computing or decentralized cloud computing. Our strategy there is very simple. You have a lot of centralized and decentralized cloud providers already, but there's a lot of niche services that aren't being provided. And that's how we're developing them right now. And then adding on the fact of decentralization and the cost saving is proving to work for all the POCs we've been doing. And then we have Gather Enterprise. We notice, especially now, you have a lot of you know large uh, companies looking at blockchain. Uh, you have so many various different options. People don't know how you can actually implement blockchain or crypto into your existing businesses, right? Mm -hmm. So enterprise gather enterprise split up into two different departments. One is the incubation aspect, and then is the uh, larger uh, sales aspect. So we help large companies um, consult with them, provide custom solutions for them to come on the blockchain, our blockchain, etc. Um, it could be so I, I can cite an example of our latest contract is we have built a POS software for a bunch of cannabis dispensaries out of 12 cannabis dispensaries out of New York. So they can, you know, bank retail uh, uh, users instead of having to work with cash, they can use uh, POS, debit card, credit card, et cetera, which is a major pain point for them. Right. Wow. So that same solution can be ported to laundromats, uh, car washes, it's anything that's cash intensive. Uh, very simply over. So that's an example of how Gather Enterprise works with these large organizations. On the incubation side, you always have developers, uh, somewhat in inexperienced people with crypto looking to launch their own companies, etc. So they need expertise, they need help. So that's what we do. We help with them tokenomics, design, tech, capital, etc. And yeah, so you have this, uh, you know, three different departments or three different areas of services and products. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you for the explanation, Reggie. That really helps. Uh, lay out the whole playing field. Now I want to dive back into the first category that you mentioned about the monetization um, and just the network. Uh, I'm curious from uh, the perspective of like a content creator or uh, you know a, a blogger, somebody who is used to monetizing their content with advertisements, can you walk mm -hmm. them through how they would benefit from using Gather uh, instead? 
there's it depends on how they just <laughs> want to implement it see we don't tell content creators that hey you need to only use gather and not ads so you will have content creators that will run ads their existing monetization methods and they will also use gather because it's just free money for them right mm -hmm. that's option a um option b is people just remove ads and they're just using gather on top and that has a lot of ux benefits because you're not bombarding your users with with ads right mm -hmm. um it's unnoticeable after you after you opt in it's a very clean um form of monetization here and then obviously it can be used for other ways such as subscriptions paywalls etc right um instead of having people pay direct cash you do this etc in terms of implementation it's really really straightforward um you sign up at online.gather.com network um you're gonna put on your website there's gonna be a manual review that happens to make sure you're um, following all the rules within your jurisdiction so we, you know we were um very of certain websites that we, we we have blocked and do not accept them because we're giving them a way to make money right once you're in the once you're accepted which takes about 24 hours for an approval at this at this stage um it's just a code snippet and you put that on the back end of your website or app once that's released and that's it it's running then we have premium features that are coming up right now. It's a standard consent banner for your regular websites, large marquee clients. We develop custom banners, et cetera, colors for the brand colors, et cetera. Um, premium features will include, you know, regionalization of languages, changing the banner in terms of colors, sizes, so they can play around with it. And then if they want to have custom messages as well. Mm -hmm. Very cool, Reggie. And I feel like there's been this ongoing trend uh, increasing of uh, content creators and influencers uh, that are working on platforms and you know they have to pay more and more to get access to their audience um, or you know if you're not paying for advertising you almost get no organic traction um, and it, it you know that sort of ties into the fact that everyone feels like they are the product and you know they're, they're being used by these social media platforms um, to take advantage of them um, have you noticed this trend and like the increase in, in traction for gather network and alternative solutions for monetization you know over the past coming years as you've been building up the platform for sure um so when i was working with publicist group uh i was on a bunch of different teams and that's when i first noticed this and you know that saying that if it's not for free then you are the product as you were saying and from targeting to the data collection that went on you saw this happening. And then within the analytics I had access to, because I had a range of different uh, things I could use, you, you could see that, you know, if you weren't paying for some form of advertising, your organic reach on multiple platforms, social media, as an example, was just dropping, right? The amount of views that were happening per scroll is just going down and down. That's because the algorithms on the back end were forcing you to make paid decisions here. So, you know, they improve their profit margins. And over the years, it's become just much worse and worse because you're having data that's being sold. I mean, I'm sure it must have happened to you or multiple people. You talk about a product or service and then boom, you see an ad on Google somewhere. No one likes that. You know, who's listening to you? Uh, that's horrible. Uh, so, yeah, you have people come to us for a lot of different reasons. One is they don't want to disturb their, their users. Two is they just want to make more money. Um, three is we don't collect data, right? We're not collecting who you are, or what, what gender you are, or anything like that. Um, in fact, it's the opposite. We, as content creators, you can reward your users. Um, you can share your revenue with them. So that in ensures or helps stickiness with staying on your site, right? Mm, definitely. And I'm curious on you know the, the differences in, in revenue generation that uh, content creators, I don't know if you have any of this background information, but like if content creators are using advertising, you know, if they switch to gather, will they be using less, will they be earning less money or does that, and, and how much it, does it depend on the size of their following that they have for their content? So if we look at standard, right? So, I mean, there's CPM and there's CPC, like cost per click and cost per mile, which is basically per thousand impressions, right? Um, and how it works with Gather, it's basically on time spent. So when you're on, a, let's say, reddit.com, it's how many ads you view, right? Mm -hmm. So you're incentivized to view more and more ads rather than content. With us, it's about time spent there. So the longer your sessions are, um, the more the creator will earn. So that, again, incentivizes more quality content for people to stay on there. So sites like streaming sites earn a lot more compared to sites where people are just coming and bouncing, which has you know their own issues. Uh, I don't have those numbers offhand. Uh, last one we did calculations because it is tied to token price mm -hmm. and then the amount of users in the total platform as well and then on the supply uh, demand side as well. But I mean, last time we did this calculations, it was, you know, proving to be more profitable uh, than ads compared in your general uh, ad payout. So not like niche area. So if you're talking about 
something like crypto ads, for example, those are very, very expensive. So that will probably pay more than Gather. Um, but if you're talking about very simple things, uh, toothbrushes, toothbrush, ad, toothbrush ad, ads, sorry. Yeah, we'll, we'll pay more. I think it was about 1.4x more or, or something along that. And then as it scales, as you get more users, as the token performance improves, they get paid more. Um, but again, then you have people who just don't care about their audience because they, they're so sticky and they just do both. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thanks for that, Reggie. And you, you, we've been talking a lot about uh, the cryptocurrency and the blockchain and, and, and how you're able to accumulate it. Um, can you talk about the functionality, you know, once you have uh, the token, are yep. the creators just sell it off or do you use it for governance, staking, other DeFi? How does that work? For sure. So, I mean, it's, it's a governance token. It's used as a form of gas within the network itself. So many transactions on the main net requires gather. Um, yes, there, there's native staking as well. That, I mean, the staking on centralized exchanges and some there's some other features coming out. So it's a payment rail within the ecosystem as well. So, for example, premium features, you need to pay in gather tokens or you can pay in gather tokens and have it discounted. Uh, read for it. Um, there's some DeFi features coming up with um, some of the incubation projects. So it's going to be used as collateral for a under collateralized stable coin. Uh, sorry, over collateralized stable coin. Um, and it does it does a lot of you. It's basically the base glue and layer that that's needed there. But yes, majority of uh, I'm not going to say majority at this stage right now. But a lot of people are ho holding. Uh, but eventually, yeah, creators will be uh, using this to sell off, and that's where our tokenomics tie in, right? One side is supply and one side is demand, and the demand side then picks up the, the sell pressure, eventually. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And you know, with these three business units that we talked about in the beginning, are you growing all of those simultaneously, or are you really seeing a lot of growth in one section specifically? Online basically sells itself. We don't need direct marketing. We might do some media buying, et cetera, to gain more customers, but it's a solution that's unique, right? Um, in terms of scale, et cetera. So that really sells itself and we have referral programs. So users come there pretty quickly. Um, that just needs enhancements in terms of added functionality and, and going, stuff like that going forward. When we talk about cloud, that's reaching a stage once we have about seven or eight different services within the cloud itself. So we have about three live right now and we're looking to put three or four more in, and then we're gonna start actually monetizing um, that, that suite of services. So we have what's called a file transfer service, uh, containers as a service and a runtime environment, which is running well, live right now. The file transfer service is very simple. It's essentially in large organizations, think of a company with 50,000 employees or more, they have to transfer a 50 TB file or five TB file from let's say marketing, from marketing all the invoices for the year to finance, right? That's a lot of files. Usually you're gonna use an external server to do that and that costs money. Using our software that we've developed, they will use the internal PCs that are not being used at that time by employees. Let's say people have gone home for the day, that's gonna use that capacity, that, that computing power storage and then move it across the, uh, within the enterprise. So what happens here is it's faster because it's within the enterprise and it saves on cost because you're not using a third party to uh, such as Google to transfer these files. And then you have the other two services as well. Um, once we have a couple more, that will be monetized. Um, and Gather Enterprise is in revenue right now. So that, that's a department that's based on fiat revenue, which the fiat revenue is in use for buyback and burns um, of the main Gather token and not any secondary tokens. Mm -hmm. um, and that's doing well because we're seeing there are people, SMEs to large organizations who are want to explore blockchain, who are looking to get into it, but they just don't know how to do it. And in incubations, they just... There's a lot of people wanting to do their own projects or do different things. So that is picking up. I would say in terms of what's scaling the fastest or growing the fastest is definitely online. I would say then enterprise, um, both are in revenue and then cloud because it's mon not monetized yet. I couldn't comment on that, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Great information, Reggie. Thank you so much. Um, and with online, uh, what are you, you mentioned you were hinting at some premium features and I'm curious on like the next steps and stages in the coming month and months on how you're planning to grow that out? After we have the premium features, there's a lot of different user requests we get. So one one feature we're really looking at, um, which is kind of highlighting it for a reason, is people want some form of user data, um, basically opt-in rates or another way of providing consent. So this is we're going to deliberate about this over the next couple of months, especially about the consent mechanism. Um, and the rest is just scale. It's, it's just about, you know, the whole back end has been built. It's ready for scale. It's just acquiring more and more customers. Our, our target for the end of, not well, 
year from when it was uh, went on live is about 100,000 publishers. And right now we're about 700 or 800 within a month or so of being live. Amazing. And if there are more publishers or content creators or just users that want to learn more about this monetization network and get involved and, and earn revenue, what is the best way for them to learn more? Online.gather.network. Amazing. Thank you so much, Reggie. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on. I will leave those links to all the business units and the online uh, in the description box below. All the best with everything moving forward, and let's follow up in the near future. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ashton. It was a pleasure.